You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. You're planning a vacation, an escape from the day-to-day routine of everyday life. You're looking forward to getting pampered in some sunbathed tropical island getaway, surrounded by cool, balmy breezes with the soothing, relaxing sounds of calypso music playing distantly in the warm island air. Doesn't it sound wonderful? Well, don't leave your pets at home. They want to go too. Welcome to Travel Tales, the show where you'll get great travel ideas on perfect places for you and your pet. From Paris to paradise, south of the border to the South Seas, Travel Tales will give you cool tips on fun vacation destinations to travel with your pet, pet-friendly hotels, and advice on how to travel safely and happily with your furry best friends. So get ready to pack the bags and the bones with your Travel Tales hosts, Susan Sims and Nicholas Veslowski. Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Sims. And I'm Nicholas Veslowski. We are your hosts for Travel Tales on Pet Life Radio. You know, as editor and publisher of Fido Friendly Magazine, we know travel. Yes, we do. And we can't wait to share our years of dog travel experience with you during our podcast each week. Yeah, that's right. How many years of experience would you say that is? Oh, well, I'm older than you. So let's (laughs) We'll be nice and say 24. Okay, we'll move on to the next point then. (laughs) Well, on today's show, we will be talking uh, about a new company that has just arrived on the scene and is making it possible to fly Fido in cabin right next to you. Yeah, this is so amazing. It's a dream come true for all of our listeners who have dogs that don't quite fit in a carrier under the seat in front of you when you fly, or maybe you don't want to put them in cargo. And I, I know for me, I have two labs, and well, suffice it to say, they are just a tad on the huge side. Yeah, they're a little ginormous. You got one, what, that's I think 75, and then Maddie's over 100? Yeah, well, Maddie's the big brown chocolate bunny. She's a she's a lab mix. We're not sure what she's mixed with, but we kindly say she's a donkey pig. But that's that's for another <laughs> show. But she's she is big and and she's uh, she's a sweet girl. But she, I'd never be able to put her in cargo because she's really frightened of the the noises. Yeah, well, um, I think part of her size also is due to the treats that she gets on a regular okay. basis. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. You've got the perfect dog. Yeah, she's very sleek, but that's, I mean, she keeps me more active than uh, I normally would be. So I think that has to do to both our weight sizes. But, you know, the last uh, flight that I did take with Tosh in my black lab was um, where she flew in cargo. And as great as the airline was making me feel confident that Tasha was, you know, well taken care of, the only time I breathed a sigh of relief was once I saw her in her crate in the terminal. You know, during the whole flight, you're a little bit nervous because it's out of sight. It's definitely not out of mind. You're mm-hmm. worrying, like, what's going on? You know, is is there somebody else in the cargo area taking care of them? You know, how are they doing if we go through any turbulence? So you always constantly worry about that. Yeah, I know. That's why this uh, this new company is offering a service. It's just a godsend. So, um, you know, I can't wait to talk with our guests to find out all about how we can fly our dogs sitting right next to us in cab and, and, and along with a myriad of other things that their company has to offer. So this will be an exciting show. So sit and stay. We will be right back with more Travel Tales on Pet Life Radio. Attention passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, put your seat bags and sleeping pets in their full upright position, and prepare for takeoff. Travel Tales will be zooming back with more great travel tips right after this. There's nothing like a shaggy dog, baby. They're shagatelic. And this is the place to find out how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Oh, yeah. So stop by our pad every week and get switched on, baby. Switched on to the show that's all about attitude. Oh, behave. With your groovy host, pet edutainer Arden Moore. Yeah, baby, yeah. Every week on demand on PetLifeRadio.com. Pets are part of the family, and when traveling with your dog, there's only one magazine to include when packing your doggie's duffel bag, and that's Fido Friendly, the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Each bi-monthly issue includes hotel, city and state reviews, and doggy destinations to explore with your furry companion. Fido Friendly magazine can be found at Borders, Barnes & Noble, PetSmart, Pet Boutiques, and Fido Friendly hotels nationwide. Or you can go online to subscribe at www.fidofriendly.com. So get traveling with your pet today and leave no dog behind. And remember, 
Fido Friendlies, the only magazine dedicated to the travel lifestyle of man's best friend and the one magazine your dog will thank you for. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Approaching our final destination. The weather is sunny and warm. Ocean temperature is a balmy 80 degrees for those of you wishing to doggy paddle. Please exit to the front and see our activities directors, Susan and Nicholas, on your way out. Have a pleasant stay. Welcome back to Pet Life Radio. This is Nicholas Veslowski along with Susan Sims, your host for Travel Tales. You know, before the break, we were talking about how great it would be if you could travel with your best friend flying in cabin next to you, not under the seat, but right next to you. And this is a wonderful idea, and it's about to become reality, as we will find out from our guests today, Chris Shuley and Kelly Waffle from Dog Travel Company. Chris and Kelly, hey, how are you doing? Hey, Susan, how are you? And hey, Susan, how good. are you? Hey, good. Chris and Kelly, it's, it's so <laughs> nice to get to talk to you. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Hey, I... You guys, I, I should probably start out by warning our listeners that this is going to be a fun show. It might be a little chaotic because we've got four people gabbing at the same time. Yeah, I think we're probably going to need a buzzword, something for us to take turns like me next. I like that. So so me next. Okay, so <laughs> what we should do is we probably should just start things out by telling our listeners all about the dog travel company and that it is the first members-only dog-friendly travel service. So, Chris, why don't you take us through you know, the concept for the dog travel company and give us a little background. Well, the, the company pretty much started out of a need, just like most dog owners. You know, it's, it, you don't want to go away without taking your dog with you and, and you worry about your dog while you're gone. And I've gone personally through a number of different situations with bad dog sitters, bad kennel situations. You know, you name it, it happens. I've, I've got four dogs of my own. So we spent a little time, did a little research, waited for some other companies to see if they would start up and, and do something about it. And nobody seemed to be moving forward. So we took matters into our own hands. Four dogs, that's a pack. <laughs> yeah, it is a pack. <laughs> if they oh. start barking, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We work with our directors of marketing every day, so we, we, we know what that's like. We're, we're kind okay. of immune to it by now, I think. Yeah. Are they the reason for starting the company as far as the inspiration to go um, within the cabin or um, you know, as far as in the airplanes and on the trains, or does that, did that develop as you guys went along? They were a big inspiration for it. I have a friend who's a pilot, and I had talked to him about doing it, and he had warned me about not flying them in, in the cargo hold. And he told me some stuff about how if they need to adjust the pressure of the, the plane, they actually do it in the cargo hold before they'll do it in the passenger cabin. Oh, wow. And, yeah, which scared me. And he said, even though the, the pilot will tell you that they're not going to do it down there if you say you have a pet, if you know push comes to shove, that's what they're mm -hmm. going to do because mm -hmm. it's one dog versus a cabin full of people. Right. Um, that got us thinking a little bit. Well, I know um, I know that you had mentioned before, you know, that some it looks like some companies were going to be able to, to get this thing off the ground. You know, no pun intended, but um, maybe, Kelly, um, you can kind of chime in and, and uh, give us a little more information, too, because, you know, not only are you able to get the FAA approval on this and, and be able to work with different airlines to make this happen, but um, what kind of hurdles did you actually have to go through? I mean, it, I, this, seemed, this must have taken a long time to get from the, the concept to really making this happen? Well, we're actually uh, working with a number of private charter uh, organizations and not the major airlines right now, but okay. we are in discussions with the FAA because um, for us, one of the things that we wanted to make sure in going into this is that the dogs were safe and were comfortable uh, on the flight. So as Chris mentioned before, there's just too much stress that a dog can go through when it's back in, in the cargo bay. So even when the dog is in the cabin, uh, sitting next to its human companion or its human parent, uh, that dog um, is wearing a, a safety harness, uh, specially designed uh, for an airplane. So uh, the dog is protected and, and won't just jump out or anything like that. So we also go through a number of steps beforehand to make sure that the other dogs that are on the plane don't have any kind of malicious behavior, that you know they can um, respond to certain basic commands that, uh, we try to socialize the dogs a little bit before they get on the plane so that, you know, it's just not mad chaos and everyone's just rushing onto the plane. So we offer mm -hmm. two kinds of planes. We have uh, the 737s, 
which are for our longer flights from, let's say, um, uh, New York and New Jersey to California. And then we also have uh, a, a series of smaller jets that can accommodate, you know, uh, somewhere between uh, 6 to 12 people. And those fly between, you know, like uh, Chicago and New York or New York and Boston or, or you know, Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, those kind of routes. Okay, now, are these going to be any special type of airports that people are going to have to go to, or are they some of the main ones like JFK or LaGuardia? I can jump in there. Um, we we will be flying into those on some occasions, but we'll also be flying into the, some of the smaller ones, too, um, like Atlantic City, Tahoe, uh, Long Beach. We'll probably be flying. Actually, I know we'll be flying into Long Beach, LaGuardia. We can fly into the big ones. During the holiday season, it can be a little bit tough with the uh, TSA and security protocols and everything because the dogs have to go through security as well as the humans. And if you've got oh, a, a large, wow. yeah, if you've got a large line of of the people there, the dogs might get a little anxious. So they've been trying to accommodate us as far as taking us in a different way or, or working with us going through security. There was a moment when um, Nicholas was in California and I was in Idaho and uh, his dog was here and we were shipping her on uh, cargo and we actually didn't go to the main terminal. We went, we went to, uh, I don't know what they called it, it was right next to the main terminal but it was more like a cargo, uh, maybe a cargo holding area, something like that. So would it be something like that where people would go maybe, ha would they be maybe checking in and then getting their dogs and going to a different spot then? Nope. The dogs will be with their owners the entire time, straight through the trip. You'll never have your dog leave your, your side. They may be pulled aside for, you know, maybe 10 feet away from you when they go through security by one of the TSA agents mm -hmm. um, as they pat them down, but the dog's going to be with you the entire time. Oh, great. Yeah, that's pretty good for, especially when um, I'm just kind of envisioning how this would work. If you guys had any um, layovers or stopovers, the dog's always with you. You never have to worry about you know, what's going on? Are they being transferred or, you know, worrying about a lost pet? Um, do, are these, yeah, are these flights direct or do they actually break it up? Um, if it's going cross country, the, the, the majority of the flights will be direct and we'll have, we will, you know, depending on the routing and we try to uh, scan the pulse of, of market demand. So, uh, depending on, on how our routing goes, there may be times when we have to have an, an indirect flight, but the majority mm -hmm. of the, the way that we're setting up the company is that, the majority of them are direct flights so that you are sitting right next to your dog or your dogs uh, during the whole flight. Chris, do you, when they come on board, do you give them some sort of, I mean, even before I would imagine they even, once they sign up for the flight, do you give the uh, pet guardians some sort of advice of how to, um, you know, arrive at the airport, how to go through security, how to, you know, almost like pet etiquette on um, giving them the rules and guidelines of traveling with their dogs on the plane? Absolutely. They'll, they'll get a handout that will arrive in the mail prior when they get their tickets, and this will go through step-by-step -step the entire process of where they go, where we're going to meet, any ticketing information, any boarding, the safety harnesses that they have to wear, the protocol, what happens you know, when they get there. We're going to take the dogs and socialize them for a brief period of time, give them a chance to relieve themselves before they get on the plane as well and kind of walk them through the entire flight, the, the boarding process, so that we don't have a big backup. You know how when you're, you're boarding and there's a big clump of people standing there hovering to right. get on the plane, mm -hmm. and they, they do the pre-boarding for small children? We're going to actually pre-board the whole plane like they do with small children where they'll, they'll start in the back and go aisle to aisle so we don't have any traffic jams in the plane and everybody can get their dogs situated and and strapped in and ready to go. That's, that's quite a visual. I know a lot of uh, the airports now, they're, they're getting more and more to where they're offering doggy stations and places where they can take their dogs to relieve themselves. So I've got to ask, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's Kelly's turn. So Kelly, I've got to ask, what if they have to go to the bathroom? Let's just say they relieve themselves before they got on the plane, the dogs, but they're up in the air and maybe they're nervous. What do you have in place for the dogs to uh, go to the bathroom? Uh, yeah, we've got a, a great uh, portable potty system that's actually uh, developed. It uses a uh, um, sod, and right. then we uh, spray that with pheromones and so forth so that the dog adapts to that. And then there's a filtering system underneath that. Um, so while we, you know, we try to have the owners take care of their dogs uh, before, you know, the flight, um, you know, we have it situated so that we can accommodate that as well. Is there actually a section on the back of the plane that has this? Um, what is it? Visually, what does it look like? Uh, it, it'll be like a container. Um, you know, it's probably uh, two to it's probably two to three feet by two to three feet, and um, uh, 
you know, we will probably take out, you know, a row of the seats in the plane and, and put it in there. Or um, there's a lot of times in the planes, um, there's like a second galley area, and we may have it back there. Oh, okay. These planes are specifically designed for this type of flight. Is that correct? The same configuration as a regular 737 would be, or a regular plane would be. We haven't, okay. other than taking out a row of seats, if we can, um, on certain planes where we can put the, the potties in the back, um, the planes oh, okay. will be in the same exact configuration. For people like you, Chris, that have four dogs, uh, is there a limit to, is it is a dog, is it going to be ratio dog to person? Or <laughs> yes, <Chris is> <laughs> I have to buy to babysitters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we do have a dog dog sitter uh, service too for people like me because mm-hmm. we need I to make sure it. that well if I if there's an ever an emergency on the plane we need to make sure that you know each dog can be taken off and each owner can get out safely so well so um i i know when people go to your website dog uh, travel dot net that they they'll be able to look at all the things that you have to offer but what's your first uh trip what is that planned where that's where is that going to fly out of Again, we have two flavors of flights. So we've got these uh, smaller uh, Learjet flights. Um, mm-hmm. and, and those are running all the time. So, uh, you know, once we get a commitment of a certain amount of people uh, going to uh, uh, a destination such as Boston from New York, that plane's ready to go. Uh, and mm-hmm. then on the 737s, uh, we've got flights that are scheduled. One of the first ones we have is from uh, Atlantic City up to Toronto, Canada. And then, uh, like you were saying earlier, beyond just the flights, if you go to our website, because it is a a member-based dog travel club, we offer a number of different benefits to our members, including vacation packages and products and services and discounts on things. So uh, the flight to Toronto also includes the ability to package that with a canoe trip uh, that you can take in Canada with your dogs uh, with an organization that, that does that with dogs all the time. So... You would go out and go camping with your dogs or stay out in, in a hotel or whatever, and they have a number of uh, different day trips that they do with the dogs in and around uh, lakes and things like that. Or oh, that's really fun. That's fun. I think, um, you know, over the last seven years in Fighter Friendly Magazine, we've done a couple of different um, reviews on those types of destination, you know, adventure destinations, really, with your dog. Because if you think about it, a lot of people just think, I'm going to go and I'm going to go to this little town and I'm going to experience this town. I'm going to stay at this Fido Friendly Hotel and I'm going to walk around. I'm going to go in some shops, maybe a Fido Alfresco, you know, find a restaurant. But when you really think about it, there is so much more that you can do with your dog and and how many people really realize that they can actually go on a canoe trip with their dog and, and learn how to how to you know have your dog in a canoe. I, I tried that once with uh, my husband and I. We had our two dogs and uh, we were going to get in a canoe and we didn't think anything of it. And uh, the guy kind of watched us. And as soon as we got out in the middle of the lake, um, it was chaos. I mean, we had no clue. And, yeah. and our big dog, she stood up and she decided she'd look to the side. Well, every time she stood up and leaned over to the side, the canoe would start to tilt. So we were trying to get her stationed. And then meantime, the other dog decided she wanted to jump in the water. And it was hysterical. And the guy, the guy on the shore just was laughing. And he says, just stay right where you are. I'll come out and help you. And, and anyway, he ended up watching our dogs for an hour while we paddled in the canoe. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I think that whole canoeing trip is a definitely a team communicative effort, and uh, <laughs> I stood, I stood by helplessly watching in a uh, one person kayak as these two went in circles in the middle of the lake. So. <laughs> It's a good yeah. bonding experience. It was a great bonding experience, and we had uh, we had life jackets on our dogs, so we were able to grab the little the little hooks on them. And and I, I don't know. I just think there's just so much more for people to do. And the fact that you know the dog travel company is here now and and is able to really take that next step and and help the pet guardians, you know, get out, you know, think outside of the box as it is. And uh, you know, this is the this is so exciting because it's the first ever company that's actually following through with this fabulous idea. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, you guys even go beyond airplanes and you involve trains as well. Is that correct? That is true. We've got uh, yeah. a, a couple of trains that we'll be working with. We've got one that'll go from Chicago down the East Coast, down uh, up to New York, uh, down to D.C., all the way down to Miami. And it'll also follow the auto train down there for those who go down to Florida for the the winter months and then come back in the spring months. That way they can take their dogs and, and their cars. 
Oh, wow. Um, and then we'll eventually have them going out cross-country, too. We're, we're working with some of the breed-specific groups. Uh, we've been contacted by a few of them about transporting to uh, dog shows as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, the specific train that we're working with right now has four cars to it, two sleeper cars, a coach car, and then a car that will be filled with grass so the dogs can play on it. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. That's so um, in the sleeper cars... Um, you know, the only sleeper car that I've been in was in Europe where you have uh, bunk beds all the way up. So I imagine that this is a little bit different, or is it the same? It's the same. So they're, I mean, they're, they're not a luxurious sleeper car by any stretch of the imagination, but you've got two bunk beds and you can lie down. There's enough room for the dog to lie on the floor, and maybe you can maneuver around it. There's a little rest area. You've got a private toilet and a, a sink in there. And then there's a oh. shower at the end of the car. So that it's kind of shared, but... Everybody seems to be able to get along. <laughs> they work out okay. <laughs> yeah, they figure hey. it out. Yeah, we're going to take a, a quick break, you guys, and when we come back, we're going to find out even more about the dog travel company, the member benefits, and, and in cost involved, and, and, and all that good stuff. So you sit and stay. We're going to be right back with more Travel Tales on Pet Life Radio. Attention passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, put your seat bags and sleeping pets in their full upright position, and prepare for takeoff. Travel Tales will be zooming back with more great travel tips right after this. School's in session on Pet Life Radio with Teacher's Pet. Learn how to communicate with your pet, train your pet, and see the world from your pet's point of view. You may even learn a few tricks yourself. Teacher's Pet with pet expert and author Sarah Wilson. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Attention passengers, we are now approaching our final destination. The weather is sunny and warm. Ocean temperature is a balmy 80 degrees for those of you wishing to doggy paddle. Please exit to the front and see our activities directors, Susan and Nicholas, on your way out. Have a pleasant stay. Welcome back to Pet Life Radio. This is Nicholas Veslowski along with Susan Sims, your host for Travel Tales. And right before the break, we were getting into the very important question about price. And uh, Chris, I had a question. As far as you know, signing up for um, a membership package, do you have to be a member of um, the dog travel company in order to take a flight? Or can you do kind of like a onesies and twosies type of thing? No, you actually have to be a member of the dog travel company club. Uh, to be okay. able to fly with us, and uh, it, membership isn't that expensive. Uh, our regular membership is a forty nine ninety five, and oh, okay. that, in addition to having the benefits of traveling with your dog, um, mm-hmm. you also get a number of other benefits. We have a, a program called Pet Promise, which is a guardian mm-hmm. notification program. So if you're ever in an accident and you're you know incapacitated and and you can't get home to take care of your your animals because you've gone to the hospital, the emergency rescue people can actually notify your appointed pet guardians and they'll go over and take care of your pets, make sure they've got dinner and they're being let out and everything. That's a great Um, service. Yep, and that's free with your membership. So Mm -hmm. for somebody who's single and, and has four animals, that's kind of priceless. I wonder whose idea that was. I don't know. I don't know, some strange person. Um, we also have other benefits. We've, we've got an online store, and members have uh, deep discounts on a number of very unique uh, pet items, as well as some of the, the basics, like poop bags, where you can get them <laughs> much cheaper than you can in the store. And that's one of the big member benefits, too. We also have discounts on pet insurance, as well as travel insurance. We, we've worked with uh, a couple good companies there, and, and we team up with uh, hotels and rental car services, too, that are all dog-friendly. Oh wow! So there, there are a lot of benefits, not just the airplanes and the trains. Yeah, I think um, I think just as a maybe um, Kelly, you can speak to this, but uh, you know, I understand all you have all different flights and you have all different itineraries and you have groups and um, maybe you know just an idea of one of the flights that you guys have in the works. Maybe you can give us like a, a price. Uh, that people can kind of get their, their minds about what they're looking at as far as what that flight would cost them to go um, and take their dog? The pricing is going to vary depending on the flight, but uh, the way I explain it to people, it's, it's similar to uh, a flying business class, and, mm-hmm. and the way that we're set up is that you, you have to buy a ticket for uh, yourself and for each dog because the dog does sit in its own seat with the harness on it. Mm-hmm. That makes so sense. So the tickets won't be the same as, like, flying coach. Um, 
Okay. But they won't be, you know, as expensive as flying first class either. So. Yeah, go ahead and just uh, just throw some stuff out. We're not going to hold you to it, but just so people can kind of get it. <laughs> well, I do have Mind some sample pricing booking. ranges. Well, I do have some sample pricing ranges. Um, one way from New York to LA will be somewhere between six hundred and seven thirty, and that's that's mm-hmm. a one way. Uh, New York to the Bahamas will be somewhere between like six seventy to seven thirty or so. Um, I'm going to that one. Yeah, that's the one yeah. I'm scheduling. <laughs> and those, those are the one-way fares, so they're you know it, they're business class rates. So uh-huh. right, no, that's not bad. I mean, especially for you know just that extra security of knowing your dog is right there, and the dog is your companion. I mean, it's your buddy that's going to be taking this trip with you. So I, it seems well worth it just for the peace of mind and the overall less stress feel of having to travel with your dog. I think it. I think it's well worth it. As we were forming the company, we did a lot of market research, and a lot of the surveys that we were looking at uh, were kind of astounding, where um, they would go out and survey uh, thousands of members of, of different associations that are related to dogs and pets. And, you know, we would look at numbers where 61% of the people that responded to a survey would rather spend their time with the dog than with their spouse. Or, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I think I know some of those people in that survey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, you know, they, they love their dog more than they love their children. Or, you know, 88% of the people uh, make sure that they celebrate their dog's birthday every year with a party and gifts. So, yeah. you know, the whole point of this is that there is, you know, if you are a dog lover, you immediately understand that bond and appreciate that. And, uh, you know, you're willing to spend a little bit of extra money to make sure that your dog is comfortable and safe and can go with you on that trip, especially if you're flying to a destination where it's a dog-friendly resort or things like that. You know, you're going to have a great time, and you're not leaving the dog behind with a sitter or in a kennel or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right, and you, and people have to remember, too, that there is, there is a cost when you do leave your dog behind, not just an emotional cost, but financially. And the interesting thing to me is uh, I was on a flight recently, and uh, um, a gal was with her her dog, and I found out that it was an emotional therapy dog. And, and we may not have a doctor's prescription that, that allows us to go, there's your friend helping us out. There- <laughs> <laughs> I muted it, but if you want to listen... <laughs> But, you know, I'll let you listen. It, yeah, go ahead. I think it all must be it something all, important. <laughs> yeah, I think he probably wants to say, "Don't forget me." But I, I think you know, it, it kind of hits home for all of us who who really miss our dogs when we travel, and on the rare times when I have to leave or when we have to leave our dogs at home, you know, we'll cut a trip short. We'll, you know, we'll talk about the dog. Oh my God, you can't even get out of the driveway when you start missing your dogs. And so, you know, the, the saying is out there and we've heard it a lot, but you know, pets are part of the family and, you know, they make you feel good. So I I think that the pet guardians out there have been wanting to, to uh, have something like this, you know, that they can finally get to take their their pet on a plane or a train it's like that john candy movie you know plane trains and automobiles um <laughs> you guys are you guys are a godsend i really mean that and i'm i'm so excited to be able to to have you guys on there on this podcast and and just kind of get people excited to to go to your website and find out more right we're really excited to get going too and get yeah, this when's started. the inaugural flight we've got um the smaller flights the shorter flights going now they're available right now um oh, okay and then our our big kickoff flight we're probably going to have one from new york to la and then we'll have the one going up to toronto is scheduled for i think june we'll start flying i'm believing it's uh late spring early summer okay perfect with the big well, you planes, know, that is. the 737s yeah okay perfect well you know it's um right now as people are getting ready for well we're well into the holiday season and getting all the christmas gifts this uh, membership actually sounds like it would make a great Christmas gift. And I think you – do you have gift cards available on your website uh, for listeners to purchase right now? We do. And the great news is that we are offering a special intro price for those uh, through the end of the year. So as we mentioned earlier, our typical membership cost for one human and one dog is forty nine ninety five. But right now um, we are offering uh, kind of a welcome, welcome aboard intro promotion for $35.95. So, oh, my um, gosh. Perfect. If, if you look at that, and then if you go to our site and you look at the whole list of benefits you get once you become a member, it's kind of a no-brainer to say, well, you know, I'm getting a lot more value here than what I'm paying for the card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's perfect. I think, 
I think I know what I want in my stocking this year. Yeah. <laughs> it is the perfect stocking stuffer. Ah, it really is. So everybody out there, go to uh, dogtravelcompany.net. Don't get confused with .com. It's .net. And Chris and Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. You, you offer a much-needed service. And, and I hope to see you on a train, a plane, or an automobile soon. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having us. Oh, perfect. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Nick. We're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll have your final friendly travel tips. So sit and stay. We'll be right back with more travel tales on Pet Life Radio. Attention passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, put your seat bags and sleeping pets in their full upright position, and prepare for takeoff. Travel Tales will be zooming back with more great travel tips right after this. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Pets are part of the family, and when traveling with your dog, there's only one magazine to include when packing your doggy's duffel bag, and that's Fido Friendly, the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Each bi-monthly issue includes hotel, city and state reviews, and doggy destinations to explore with your furry companion. Fido Friendly magazine can be found at Borders, Barnes & Noble, PetSmart, Pet Boutiques, and Fido Friendly hotels nationwide. Or you can go online to subscribe at www.fidofriendly.com. So get traveling with your pet today and leave no dog behind. And remember, Fido Friendly's the only magazine dedicated to the travel lifestyle of man's best friend and the one magazine your dog will thank you for. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Attention passengers, we are now approaching our final destination. The weather is sunny and warm. Ocean temperature is a balmy 80 degrees for those of you wishing to doggy paddle. Please exit to the front and see our activities directors, Susan and Nicholas, on your way out. Have a pleasant stay. Welcome back to Pet Life Radio. This is Nicholas Veslowski along with Susan Sims, your host for Travel Tales. You know, before the break, we were just finishing up talking with Chris Chulet and Kelly Waffle from Dog Travel Company about their new members-only dog-friendly travel service. And what a great company, what a great concept, being able to really get out there um, and fly with your dog right next to you, not having to worry about them being down below or going on a train trip with them. There's a lot of good... um, direction that's coming out of this company. So I really am looking forward to seeing this, this company grow. I am too. I, I, I'd like to be on their inaugural flight and their, and their first train excursion as well because just to see these dogs, I mean, the, you're going to be able to see all this joy and, and expressions that dogs have when they're having a good time and it's going to be crazy. Well, can you imagine just the takeoff? I mean, it's fun to watch a little kid, you know, when you're taken out of an airplane um, off the off the ground for the first time and they have that smile. Just to be next to your dog to see, you know, what's going on. You know, I of course, there may be some uh, dogs that have adverse anxiety just because they don't know what the heck's going on. But that feeling, I could just see Tasha grinning, you know, ear to ear with this yeah. huge canine smile. <laughs> Yeah, everybody just uh, know your dog and know if this would be enjoying for them or if it would be torture. <laughs> yeah, what do you uh, think like for I, Maddie and Zoe? Do you think they would enjoy it? Yeah, I I think Maddie is she's got anxiety when it comes to loud noises. She thinks a uh, hot air balloon's a wild dragon, doesn't she? Yeah, it, it would be kind of interesting, but but uh, anyway, I think the dog travel company. Uh, the membership card that they have, it's going to make a great Christmas gift. And it's something everyone will be able to use and enjoy, you know, for the pet guardian that, that has everything. Uh, this is something that they don't have, and it's, and it's something that um, they'll have a lot of fun with. Yeah, you know, speaking of Christmas time, this brings us to our Fido-friendly travel tip. Um, around the holidays, 
you know, we always worry about there's an extra commotion, a lot of things um, laying out for decorations and a lot of different types of foods. And we always hear what is toxic to dogs. And we kind of hear it's almost like floating knowledge of beware, don't have your dog eat this. Uh, Chocolate comes to mind right away. Raisins is another. But did you also know that one of the other uh, hazards, especially around holiday time, uh, are poinsettias? So you've got to be careful. If your uh, dog, if Fido's sniffing around the poinsettias too much, make sure they're not um, chowing down on that because you could have some adverse effects later on. Yeah, that's actually a good tip. I didn't really know that. And I think, uh, you know, everybody knows about chocolate. I think that's probably the number one that people know that chocolate can be toxic. And and when you're planning your holidays and you're getting all your decorations out and, you know, obviously you got to keep Fido away from the tree because they, you know, want to meet in the ornaments and so on and so forth. But, you know, the poinsettia usually is a, a decorative you know, plant that you're going to put, you know, maybe on your fireplace, maybe by the doorway. And uh, if you're going to leave Fido at home, it's probably a good idea to, to uh, put that someplace out of their reach when you're not there to, to monitor them. That's a good tip. Yeah, you know, I always thought when I looked at uh, poinsettias that they, they look fake. I always thought they were a, f- a fake plant even growing up until, you know, I was older. They just, they seem to last forever. I don't know what it is <laughs> about them, but they, it's like they don't go away. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, hey, that was good advice as always. And and if you would like to find out more about today's topic, so you're just about traveling with Fido, you can go online to phytofriendly.com to subscribe or you stop in your local borders, Barnes and Nobles or PetSmart and pick up a copy of Fido Friendly today. And and I think uh, on that travel tip, Nicholas, didn't um, didn't she say that something's going to be uh, included in the January February issue of Fido Friendly? Yeah, that's great. Thank you for reminding me, Susan. But oh, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> As publisher, <laughs> you must keep the editor in line at all times. But all time. uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a great fact page. It's going to talk about traveling you know, abroad and within the country on what you need to know and what s- websites you can go to for further information. We're also going to have a list of the toxic foods that um, – Maybe you're not so much aware of. There's a lot of house plants um, that Fido shouldn't be around. A lot of other types of foods, onions, um, garlic in large quantities, um, and things like that. That will be really good, useful tips. We're going to put that in the January, February issue, and we're also going to put that online uh, in December. Okay, good. So everybody, uh, if you if you're not subscribing to Fido Friendly, go to phytofriendly.com and make sure you get the January February issue. And and we would love to hear from you with questions or comments. So feel free to email us at Pet Life Radio. And until next time, safe travels. Leave no dog behind. This is Susan Sims along with Nicholas Veslowski for Travel Tales on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio presents Travel Tales, the show where you'll get great travel ideas on perfect places for you and your pet. From Paris to paradise, south of the border to the South Seas, Travel Tales will give you cool tips on fun vacation destinations to travel with your pet, pet-friendly hotels, and advice on how to travel safely and happily with your furry best friends. So get ready to pack the bags and the bones with your Travel Tales hosts, Susan Sims and Nicholas Veslowski, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>